Hello everybody, my name is Petr Koutny and today I will speak about the game Petr Svidler Magnus Carlsen. Why? I will show how simple chess motif, which is to attack opponent's weakness, is sometimes enough to win our chess game. Nothing else. Sometimes we are searching for hard chess plans. We are lost in our chess ideas and plans and moves. But sometimes simple move is the best move and I hope you will enter this game because I will show a game where Magnus Carlsen is playing a really simple chess and I hope you will enjoy so welcome here and feel free to press like or follow um, at the end of this video. So what we are watching? We are watching Spanish opening. Yes of course. Spanish opening is one of the most complicated chess opening and there is um, tons and tons chess moves, ideas and plans and it's not make sense to speak now about theory. It makes sense to stop um, this game in the first interesting position. So both players are playing with their pieces. They are trying to set up their middle game position as best as they can. Of course, um, nothing special will happen in opening, but the real chess fight will start in the middle game and both players need to have good army. Both players need to have a good pieces. And now we are watching how Magnus Carlsen is playing with one rook. Okay, he will exchange one pawn, playing h6 and he is playing with queen and another rook. So, we are nearly in the middle game and what we are watching. Um, open B file and still um, it's hard to say which player has advantage, maybe white but not big and what's the main ideas, what's the main plan here. So white is playing to E2 by his queen and of course another standard Spanish move and this bishop is a bad bishop. Of course this bishop has not future here. And maybe uh, this square is a good square for this knight. Uh, so bishop is usually making space for knight from c6 and is playing to bishop to f8. Okay, knight to e3. And maybe this is not the best move. Yes, it's uh, crazy to speak uh, about this normal logical chess move that it's a small mistake. Uh, I will tell you that the right answer should be move uh, h3. h3 uh, it's going to stop move d5 because then it's not working move knight on e5. I will show for example uh, if after h3 uh, Black will take on c4, knight to d7 and knight to c5. Looks like uh, I a small edge because he stopped the really most important chess plan. Black like to play move d5. And if is not playing white move h3 and he played knight to e3, of course Magnus Carlsen know that the strongest moves are in the center. And if we have chance to play in the center, we have to play there. And Magnus is playing d5. And now it's a different. Um, Black will get a space. Black will get a new air and new options or squares for his pieces. Okay, one exchange, why not? And another exchange. Maybe, maybe it's interesting moment now to take on d5 by a bishop. And we should be doubted if White should not take on e5 with this pawn. I will tell you that it's a dangerous and maybe you will be surprised how big difficulties will White have if he will take this pawn. Okay, what's happened? White will take another exchange and now watch the last rank. This is a difficult position for Black. Uh, sorry, for White. Of course, White will take on e8. But he's losing because of this threat. And maybe it's not hard to miss this idea. Checkmate on g2. And of course here uh, White will lose his queen. So that's a really good moment. 
how to say, how it's important to say that we need to be careful. We need to check every opponent's threats and ideas. And if our opponent is giving us a pawn for free, just stop for a while and think if there is any trick, there is no, no trap where we should fall. Okay, for this reason, uh, um, maybe Magnus Karasen took by Rook and H3. H3 is another small mistake and it's the old through one mistake follow another mistake. And you know, Magnus Karasen is going to find a plan. He's going to attack D3 pawn, the biggest white weakness. Of course, I believe that Petrus Fiedler saw it, but he doesn't underestimate it as a big threat. Okay, what's happened? Magnus Carlsen is going to attack d3 pawn, uh, Petrus Fiedler is going to defend. Okay, and uh, Magnus Carlsen is starting to attack this pawn. Maybe another threat is coming from this side. Okay, um, bishop to b1. Of course, everybody see that idea behind this move is to win a material. But what to play? Yeah, it's playing, it's playing uh, his queen to d7, and of course, it's attacking on d3. As I told you, this is the biggest white weakness. Maybe it's interesting time to take this pawn, and it's a question if this move is working or no. So let's watch this variation. What's happen if black will take on a5? Okay, one exchange, why not? Uh, attack on on our queen and maybe here black is losing pawn so exchange but I believe here black has advantage because this pawn is a dangerous pawn and it's too far and of course um, there's a simple plan to play a4 a3 a2 a1 so this end game should be okay for black but it doesn't matter that's another story and uh, Magnus Karasen played uh, his queen to d7. Okay, e4. And maybe this move uh, Petra Sviller missed. Now uh, White's position is under pressure. And looks like from nothing, um, Black has good advantage or at least interesting active middle game. And White is under pressure. Yes, of course, uh, only one move is here, and it's, this move is knight to d4. Exchange. And the last mistake, it's um, this move, and one more time. It's really hard to believe that this move is a mistake. What do you think? Why this move is a mistake? And Magnus, uh, Magnus Karasen missed great opportunity, and maybe a winning move is here to take on h3. Wow! This looks really mad, but it's a great move. Okay, what's happened? One exchange, another exchange, and it's coming nearly checkmate. Uh, yes, surprisingly, White's king is under attack. And what to play? For, for example, you think that this move is okay? No, check, and after this check, White will lose his rook. So that's a mistake. Okay, maybe bishop to e3, but um, bishop to d6, of course, that sounds like checkmate. So, f4, exchange, and rook to h5. White is lost. So, even Magnus Carlsen missed this great opportunity, how to win a really great chess game against strong Petrus Filler. But that's life. Uh, we are human and everybody is making mistakes, nobody is perfect. So at least we saw interesting variation. So let's come back. And Magnus Karasen missed his chance to win the game immediately. He took on d3. But at least it doesn't matter. He has a great advantage after move c5. And still looks like why is okay because he's going to attack uh, this rook. But it's not enough. So what's happened next? Uh, Black will take on d3 and c4. And this position is a really difficult position for white. 
Watch, uh, watch these two points. They are on the dark squares. So this is a target for black species and different between white's activity and black's activity or white's passivity and black's activity is so huge that I believe that this position is for Magnus Carlsen 1 here. Even here, it's the game may be lost. And okay, of course, we will watch another moves, but we are watching game of one of the best chess players of all times. We are watching game of Magnus Carlsen. So it's not a surprise that Magnus Carlsen, without any mercy, will win this game and it will look like without any difficulties. So why Magnus Carlsen won this game? He played well. He used on his uh, really one chance. He was attacking D3 weakness. He get the chance, he get the activity and at the end he's playing good game. So check on B8. Okay. And maybe now Rook to B1 is a um, is game and game is end of the game because of course it's attack on f2. Uh, so there's a big threat. So maybe now White is taking the last chance and he's going to attack attack um, Black's position, but it's too late. Of course, it's coming deadly chess attack. Okay, look to b2. Maybe if White will take on f7, it's a check, check. And of course, it's end of the game, end of the day for Petra Siedler. So I'm sure that both players saw this variation and here everybody know that Black is winning. So he is playing Rook to B2, but Rook to D5, check and F6. Of course, uh, White is losing a bishop and is losing his game. I think it was a really interesting chess game because what we saw, we saw a deep theory, nothing special till two small mistakes. You know, it's hard to believe that move h3 is a mistake and now how strong is the attack on opponent's weakness, how strong is to play good chess and to attack opponent's d3 pawn and only then Magnus Carlsen is trying to push his energy to opponent's weakness. So he's playing to d7, he's attacking three times, okay, now he's attacking by a pawn, and now he's taking this pawn, and he's making big pin after c5, and looks like after this um, exchange, white has so bad position, many weaknesses, no activity, and Sounds like white is lost. So I hope you saw interesting chess game. I hope you find an interesting chess video. And thank you very much for every comment, every likes, every follow. I hope that everybody will play like Magnus Carlsen. If not, so at least as as close as possible to play like Magnus Carlsen. So have a have a good day. Enjoy. And I hope I will see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.